dropping private yala gumbo today, baby. Should be this your boy N A O N A A. What up, it's DJ E F N. And this is Drink Chance Miller, Tammy Crazy War, Hayapi Yawa. Make some noise! <laughs> and right now, I'm gonna be honest, man. When we're looking at these two brothers here, as at one point, I never thought I would see them back together. Mm. One brother was in Africa lighting incense, <laughs> the other brother was in Utica Ave. <laughs> Eating yuca. I was gonna say selling incense. Selling <laughs> so, so incense. That incense factory. <laughs> then we got another brother that's gonna pop in and here and now. The most legendary, but we'll talk about that later. But let's just get to They have just dropped an album that is just for the fans. And they could have put it on Spotify. They could have put it on iTunes. They could have put it on your local Eulery. No. They wanted to put it for their fans, their fans only. These guys are monkey foot, foot and they still the most lyrical motherfuckers in the game. And I'm listening to this album, and they not slipping up even a little bit. And they got a lot of money. <laughs> in case you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, we talking about the one, the only motherfucking Black Star. Make the Now y'all seen Bay, I'm gonna start with you. I, I don't have a lot of money. I live on a stipend. Yeah, me too. Then you create it for yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, do we have that clip? Now let me just tell you something, y'all seen Bay. This is real talk. Whenever I'm down and I feel like life is fucked up and I don't wanna keep moving on, or I feel like music is not where I want it to be. Okay. I always go to this clip and I watch this and this shit saves my life. This is real talk. Can you play it, please? Oh, wow. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> He's like, that's the old me. No, it's not even the old me. It's just I'm, you know, I'm noticing a lot of things. It's all favorable. It's beautiful. That blazer was gorgeous. <laughs> Don't forget the fedora. Oh, oh, Don't the fedora is amazing. Don't forget the fedora. The whole thing is a, is a good moment. I'm gonna tell you why I love that clip. The do rag under the fedora was a good day. <laughs> the success, <laughs> the success of your solo, the success of Black Star, the success of Dave Chappelle's show. Your bars are not supposed to be like that. Um, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Explain. <laughs> yes, they are. Expl explain because we're I, not there. I'm, this is what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. This is Allah's gift to me. Right. Right. So, you must, you know, put your crown on when I mean, you must. You always knew that? I was I was great at rhyming from the moment I started. Mm. I was nine years old. I was never not good. Mm. Gee, I, I think we should make some noise for that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need that confidence. No, I, I'm gonna be honest, and I swear to God, I really wasn't because had we just did this interview, it would just be uh, just us and and not at the shack. I swear to God, this is something that really motivates me because I fall out of love with music a lot. 
Like I fall out of love with the business. I, did I say business? No, no, no. Which yellow? I man? mean, it's nothing. It's mm. not. You know, you should fall out of love. Right. That means you're a human being. You right. know what I mean? Right. It's not worthy of your love. Right. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? The and game. The business is not the music, so right. you can fall I mean, out of love. The, the art is is another thing altogether. Right. I mean the the fence around it called the industry is just you know it's just a industrial fence you know. Right. So we had Talib on the show. And we actually asked him um, about your whereabouts and what uh -huh. the time. I've yeah, because we we had we, we, you was like a no man at one point, right? Um, I'm alive on planet Earth. My country is Earth. I'm from a country called Earth, like everybody else. So that's my perspective on life and living in places. I've never heard of this country Earth. <laughs> <laughs> they got an El Paso. <laughs> Yeah, the war passport. <laughs> yeah, right. Because that was the rumor. The rumor was you went to Africa. I did. And you lost your passport. And then you became a, a citizen of whatever country you was I, in, I, in Africa. I, I'll tell the full story at, at, at another time. Okay. Because, you know, that, that's like a whole way, other yes. thing. Yes. Yes. I, was, I was living in <laughs> South Africa. Right. And... Uh, during my stay there, I obtained the secondary travel document, which is well documented, the history of it and the provenance of it and and the like, and I obtained one. And there was some disagreement between the US. myself and the and the uh, South African government as, as it relates to what they uh, qualify as a valid travel document. Oh, sure. And that was the uh, old apartheid, remember? Cause, no, no, I mean, man, this, is, this is post-apartheid, yeah. but, okay. you know... A, but it's still the remnants Apartheid of it. has many different um, right. outfits these days. Uh, so I wouldn't classify so much as that, but it was an experience. I often invite people to look up the world passport for themselves and just take it from there because I'm not here to make up anybody's mind about anything, but... Uh, that was a part of my experience. Okay, so let me not get my hopes up. You said the world's passport? The world passport. If I'm a felon, I cannot fill out for that, right? Let's um, just be clear. You, you have to look it up, but I'm sure that there's some I, I exemptions. I just feel like I'm, I yeah. feel like I'm not going to be. No, no, you no, can't no, be a citizen in any country? my hopes up. There's information out about it. Anyone is invited to, to, to check it out for themselves. I, I, I don't Sounds wanna, like a community of people needs to be a part of this. I, I don't want to, you know... Uh, What's that say? Global citizen? They shut me down. Me. Global citizen. You can't say no, nigga, you, you fell it. <laughs> no, but you came low entry. Low entry, yeah. You came low entry because when I did your show the first time, I said, you should, we going to Africa. You said, do they got W's in Africa? <laughs> the hotel, right? I was out of line. <laughs> I was out of line. <laughs> I was out of line. In fact, they do. <laughs> no, they got yeah. nice hotels in Africa. Yeah. 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 No, but you yeah. like, y'all go stay at the W. Yeah, because you know why? They used to lie to me. They used to tell me I had to get vaccines. I had to get shots. It depends I, on the I, country you're going over there. <laughs> Well, this, but this was this South was South Africa. I went this South was Africa in total, totality at this time until I met Akon, and then Akon said, "Nigga, you come out there, no vaccine, nothing." And I was just like, I, was saying, I don't know if I believe you anymore, Akon. Okay, he just sold everything to me. He was like, hey, "Come on, over, let's just go." I was just like, "I, I, I forget you from Jersey City. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas is different." I forget you from Jersey City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, shout out to Akon. So let's, let's just let's just get back to this album, right? You guys, um, these fans have been begging for this album for so long. So on, on, on this is like a two-part question because on one part, whew, you gave the fans everything they, they, they wanted. but And then some. And then some. But to, to this generation, this might be the most laziest generation I've ever seen. Like, they no, have Google. No fear of time. Yeah, yeah, they have Google and they'll still be like, well, how do I get it, right? So, I remember a, fr a friend of mine's had, he, he threw out a movie, and this movie was so hard to download. Like, it, it wasn't in the, so, and he was like, yo, how was people not supporting us? We're like, we can't find the shit. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Because... So how do y'all 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 navigate through this through the system of you know th these fans that because oh, uh, luminary l l luminary everyone doesn't know this is a, a subscription based everyone doesn't know this how do how do y'all navigate is this the that? first album like music project on there yeah it is because we, we, we know you do the podcast mm -hmm. through there yep. 
There you go. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You knew we did a podcast today. That's right. That's right. right. You, make you, some noise for me. I make some, some noise, noise for me. Yes. Yeah. 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 Come on, man. Right. Come on, man. Yeah. 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 Get the fuck up, man. Come on. Okay. Because I mean, and listen, I'm not gonna differentiate. Between okay. real and fake fans, because who knows right. what station people are in life or what right they may point, not have, be what, able to what's going on or what, what they are in their life right. to even know that we have. But we have made a choice for a lot of valid reasons to be in control of where and how we distribute our art. Right. And I think every artist should have that choice, just like every human being should have a choice where to sell their wares at if mm. they if they got wares to sell. Um, and so because of that choice. To have our podcast on Luminary, people's parties on Luminary, people who have been following us, and I'm not saying real fans, but people who have come on a journey with us, have been following what Yasin Bey has done with art installations, who right. understand about the albums that he's worked on, who understand, right. who follow me and Styles P album, me and Diamond right. D album, right. the ones who follow, who go to Netflix and see all Dave Chappelle specials. Right. These people was already on Luminary. Right. They were already listening to Midnight Miracle. Right. You know, and again, I want to stress that's not even a judgment or nothing. Mm -hmm. But at this point in our careers, and because of the way the music business, and I was speaking for myself, right. we we have to as as men. Um, and as artists, right. uh, focus on not trying to cast a wide net and get everybody. Right. Because even me as a fan, as a fan of Black Star, I want to hear Black Star wherever I feel like hearing it. Right. But me as as a fan of Black Star, I also want to trust Black Star, and I also want to follow Black Star lead. And if and for us, it makes sense not to cast a wide net and try to get everybody, but for the people who are, are following us and right. people who are rocking with us, let's get them first. And you know what? We may have vinyl come out. We may do other things. Oh but no, this is just the beginning. And yeah. also, I mean, we you know, it's a principal choice. It's not like. There's an effort to make it unnecessarily inconvenient for people. I mean, from from my point of view, I mean, it seems fairly accessible and, and yeah. like a reasonable distance for any listener to cover. You know, it, we're consolidating the experience. We're saying you don't have to go to all of these different places. You could just come right here. Right. And, you know, it's, it's a question of value. If you value what we're doing, and we've explained to you, I mean, quite clearly in... in uh, in various formats, the reasons why we why we've chosen to do this, and the principles behind it, and what we're trying to establish, and what we're trying to reform, in, in many ways uh, that exists in the system, then it's like it's a no-brainer. You're supporting a historical project with an historical approach. So if that's too cumbersome for you, well then like just stay where you are. To be quite candid, because you know when it's not. It, we're not here to just bow to make things like convenient for people per se. You know, right. we're not complicating the process in this way. If the machine as it exists now was more amenable and fair, well then no problem. But when they like in a legalized criminal enterprise in essence, in my observation, well then I mean Like back in the days if you wanted good, you know, gold fronts, you had to go to Albany Square Mall. Might have got robbed Similar. in the process. <laughs> no, no, it's not even that. Right. I mean, it's not even that. It's like, you, you know, uh, again, there's a prevailing metric that exists that mm. does not take the artist into consideration at right. all. That really doesn't take humanity into consideration mm. at all, to be perfectly mm. candid. Um, and what we're doing is a very human thing. So it's, right. we're not going to let the machine set the pace for us. Right. When we built the machine, in essence, you know, so. right. the machine can't do what we do. Can, no. can I ask you? Because there's going to be people that listen. They don't artists that don't know. There's creative ways to release their music and maintain ownership. And without getting into the details of your business, it seems like what you did here is to maintain ownership. You know, get what you're going to get something out of. Putting it out. Oh, we've Zoom already. I mean, and, and, you could do it, producer. and you could do something else with it down the line. Oh, no, this is the life of it. I mean, it came out two weeks ago, you know, barely. You know, this is just the beginning. It's, it's not like something that just came out this week and it's right. going to go away. You know, it's, a, it's, it's historically preserved. And right. that's the difference. And you have to have the confidence of knowing that you're in a position to do that. And knowing that your album, like we call it, No Fear of Time, will stand the test of time. If you're chasing the moment, you're chasing clout, and you're chasing something that's not actually real. It's not a promo run for first quarter or fourth quarter right. numbers and shit like that, right? Tom Lip, I just want to do a shot with you for no reason. I'm just, I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm just gonna, 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 I'm just gonna,
I'm just hosting this one. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone at Red Cup. Okay. Red Cups, okay, alright. The Red Cups are like, this, no, this, no, this, this is usually right. alcoholic cups. So, like, describe to this, this area that we at right now. This is called the shack. Describe to us this. Uh, the shack is, a, is an old car garage, probably from the 1950s. I didn't change the outside at all, but inside okay. we tricked it out. Right. I would drive by here and I told my wife one day I was going to buy it. She said, what are you going to do with that shack? I said, what don't you worry about? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do with that shack. Mm -hmm. What I did was I made this clubhouse. Nothing fancy. Mm -hmm. But man, this is like a home for our culture. Yes. It means a lot, Nori, yes, that thank you, you. you came here. Yes. The last time I saw DMX, we had a great night here. Quality wow. brought them by. Wow. We've had parties here with Common, with Rhyme, and, and Freestyle, or, or, or Chance the Rapper. All kinds of people just fall through, and, and we make we make memories. The walls in here splattered with just random night memories. Yes. Photographer Matthew Baton, I think, took all these photos with the exception of the Block Party poster. Right. That's me and most at a comedy club in London. God damn it. We had a great time that night. We ended up watching the Super Bowl and then in halftime called Colin Kaepernick because we could. Because <laughs> your life is dope and you do dope shit. Right, and my life is dope and I do dope shit. <laughs> you know, like, like, this is a strange place, Ohio, but it's a good place. But yeah. the memories we made here are legendary. Things have happened in this room, in this town, people wouldn't even believe. Right. And Quali's a regular, Yassine's a regular. We like, recorded some of the Black Star uh, album here in this room. Right here. So, uh, so can I say something? Because, yes, sir. Because a lot of times people move to Miami and say, I'm never coming home. I'm going to stay here. A lot of times people go to Japan and say, I'm never coming home. I'm staying here. They go to L.A. This is probably the first time a person says, I'm going, I'm staying in Ohio. I'm never coming back. <laughs> how did you, how did to discover this. Well, you don't know, that needs its own episode. I mean, we, we do the thing. Yeah. I this is a home for our culture. And I'm honored. I'm honored you're here, man. Yeah, but, Cheers but let me, to Drink Champs. Let me say something to Drink Champs. Drink Champs. Cheers to Drink Champs. Whatever Donnell's complaining about. Cheers to that too. But let me say, let me tell you something, Dave. Um, off show is about giving people their flowers and giving people um, their praises now. And um, I'm going to just tell you something. I've seen the likes of, I was too young for Richard Pryor, so I came, Eddie Murphy. I remember when people went to go see Eddie Murphy movies and they got dipped. Yeah. Like, like they was taking pictures for the movie, right. like they were in the movie. And I've seen these comedians run. And I've always seen people go Hollywood and, you know, leave certain people. The thing that's special about Dave, is you always have hip hop with you. When I did Chappelle show, mm -hmm. and I wanted to do music, I couldn't get people to come on. I would reach out to artists and like, they'd be like, like, like who, who could you remember that you tried to get? To get I'm on? not gonna say any names. <laughs> Nor he's the he's a dirty motherfucker for doing that. <laughs> Niggas that you know and love and I know and love said no, but really? to, in their defense, no one ever heard of this show anything. So so Donald, oh, come over here too. Everyone come over here for one second, because this is a funny part. This is all funny. Um we know. Yeah, yeah, go over there. We know we directed this. Listen, listen, listen. Hold up, Don we got a mic for you. And, and, and Dave. Yeah. Me and Tyler Lib has always been great. <laughs> I felt like after I had a certain person on my show, we even got tighter, which is not heard of mm -hmm. because when certain things like that happen, most people, you do, you, you, you <laughs> separate. <laughs> I was with I had Tyler to, Lib. Okay. When that drink champs came out. <laughs> okay, so I and had to warn I, them. I, I know me and EFN called each other, or I called you, or you called me, or whatever we called each other, and we right. said, we can't let this come out without yeah, us telling. Hold on, hold on, hold on, stay right there, stay right there. Without telling Tyler first. Without telling Tyler first. So I would like to ask y'all, where was y'all at when y'all first heard it's, Kanye say, this was not the Kennedy assassination first of all, nigga. <laughs> where were you? I'll never forget. I was eating mashed potatoes when it came across. 
across the wire. Across the tube. Shots fired. Well, we were together. We were in Denver. Yeah, we were in Denver. And what happened in Denver? Because y'all getting high. Uh, uh, what? Look, look. No, 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 no. The only reason we're even smoking and drinking and, and entertaining this tomfoolery is because we're on a show called Drink Champs. That's right. It's all my fault. That's right. That's right. What do you mean, Drink Champs? Nigga, I'm standing next to the Drink Champ. Nobody's fucking with him. So, so, so y'all, y'all in Denver, and what happens? I, I, I don't remember. Listen, no, listen. no, 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 listen. Uh, pop culture is a desert right now. Mm. And your show is an anomaly. Mm. And and that Kanye West uh, interview you did was one of my favorite things that I've seen in all of pop culture in recent history. <laughs> Sincerely. Thank you, Dave. I, I, I fuck with Kanye, right. but man, I ain't seen him like that in a minute. Right. It was funny. Right. It was engaging. Mm -hmm. And then this nigga had to go in on Quali's hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On his hat, you said? On his hat? He went on Quali's hat. Yeah, I forgot about his hat. I forgot about his hat. He said something about Quali making baseball hats popular. Ain't hey, no disrespect, nigga. I laughed. <laughs> I would like to big you up, Talib, because honestly, I could tell the first two days we spoke, you were hot. Okay. I can tell, but you trusted me as a friend. Uh-huh. And I was really respect that. Mm -hmm. Because you knew I said, yo, Talib, I couldn't stop anything. <laughs> you know, like once once a person starts to go mm -hmm. and a person of, of that caliber is just like, damn, what do I do? I can't throw a muzzle on them. But you could have you could have took this the wrong, wrong way. Mm -hmm. You could have you could have called <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> no, God, what are you talking about, nigga? No, because I'm gonna kill that motherfucker <laughs> for that baseball hat comment. Nobody, nobody makes fun of my hats. Nobody. This nigga was, this nigga was not hot at all. I was with him when he saw the nigga was yeah, laughing was immediately. Yeah, he was not. Hot. But the f <laughs> my first two calls, I was nervous. Uh, okay. But then the third and fourth and everyone, you kind of like. Just brushed it off and was uh -huh. just like, but you said something to me that was very, very, probably the most popular, uh, probably the most illest things I've ever heard in my life. You said to me, the thing about Kanye is, even when he disses you, he helps you. Mm. And you yeah. said the problem with him is he knows that. I, I, I do remember saying that. I agree with that. So I, I didn't hear a diss. I heard, I heard, I heard a diss. Um, Cause you be wearing them hats, nigga. But I heard, I heard an alley oop. I heard an alley oop. I did add fun with it, but you know. Do you think? Are you getting phone calls? How how is this? How does this? I mean, obviously, me and EFN called you, mm -hmm. but the episode drops. Are you getting phone calls? How, how does this work for you? Oh uh, yeah, that was good times. Um, mm -hmm. It was <laughs> good times. <laughs> it felt like you know what it felt like. It felt like having a hit record out. Wow. Yes. That's how it felt. The way that I remember, like, when Get By was out, wow, just that's how it felt. Get By. Yeah. Wow. It just, so it, so it just, you know, it reminded me of what Kanye meant to the culture. And, right. um, you know, wow. the hat shit was funny to me. Right. Um, it was hilarious. I thought it was, I laughed. <laughs> but I didn't um, even realize you wear hats like that. No, but it's funny. Until it's, then, I was like, it's oh, funny because, you know, you helped me because <laughs> y'all put it in two parts, right? So it was, it right. was a cliffhanger with right. shit. Yeah. Right? And the first part, he just dissed me, and I didn't see the second part. Right. So the first part, I was like, yo, that was weird. But the second part, you was like, yo, but didn't you just see him? And what you was talking about was pictures at my at Dave Chappelle comedy show, which was on my birthday. I DJed. I'm DJing. Dave says, Con uh, Kanye going to show up. Kanye shows up, no security, nothing. I'm like, okay, I'm going to play an all Kanye set. He sat next to me. We had a great time. That was like a month before I saw him on drink chairs. Wait, where was this? At the at the stand. I broke it up. But nah, uh -huh. you know, it was my birthday, so I had all my people with me. Okay. A lot of flatbush niggas. And a lot of baseball hats. So when Kanye said it's gonna be 12 niggas with baseball hats, I knew exactly <laughs> which niggas he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? And was, we, we all had a group chat. We all, you know, we, we you know, you're a certain age, you on the group chat with your friends from right. back in the day. We all in the group chat just laughing about this shit. Right. Um, 
But you know, it was a moment that I that I had to I had to have fun with it, right? Because I got a lot of love for Kanye, um, and um, he seemed there was there was underlying context behind that. Mm. You know, it really had nothing to do with bars or common or baseball hats or none of that. Right. Had nothing to do with that. And so for me, there Almost was a like, part of it. Was, go ahead. Let me say the rip. Okay, go ahead. Kanye got a huge platform. Uh huh. And I care, and I, you know, I'm, I'm like Marlo from the Wire. My name is my name. Right. You don't speak my name in no disrespectful way. That's how I feel. Right. Um, and he got a huge f- platform, and I love him. Mm-hmm. And he's my friend, and he's my brother. So this was all I love very, that about you. very conflicting and difficult. Right. Which and, you've expressed on Drink Champs before. Right. Your love right. For Which right. is why, and, me, and, and to be real, right. me expressing that on Drink Champs is what he was responding to. Yes, it was. When he, when he said what he had to say. Yes, it was. When I saw the documentary, a shout out to Cootie because I think he did a great job. No, it was amazing. But when I saw the documentary, there's moments in the documentary of me and Yasin Bey together with Kanye, and I'll be honest with you, my life was moving so fast at that time. A lot of shows, a lot of drinking, a lot of smoking, a lot of just rap. Hey, 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 hey don't confess. Hey, right. it's, a lot of, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of shit. Right. I'm you watching this. Catch it, Quali, okay, don't okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I'm watching this documentary, and I don't remember those moments. Mm. And so me not remembering those moments, I had to realize, well, if I don't even remember those moments until I had to see them on film, right. the people who wasn't there, they definitely don't know right. about that. So they don't have no context. So I have to stop even be considering the context of people who wasn't there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like for the people who was there, they know. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's, that's what that documentary reminded me of. Okay. Very briefly, I spoke to Consequence. Mm-hmm. Right? This is when the first episode dropped. Because By the way, this has nothing to do with it, but this nigga consequence, perfect teeth. <laughs> Sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> so, so, so when I spoke the consequence. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna be trending. It's gonna be trending. So, so yeah, see. So when I spoke the consequence, at, at first it seemed like he was. You know, uh, a little disgruntled because people was using footage uh, of him that um, was from 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 early on, and then later on it seemed like it was like, alright, it was cool. But one one of the the, the footage from the Kanye documentary which you just brought up is you kept saying this guy is going to be the guy. Yeah, yeah, I did. Like I very mean, confidently too. Yeah, I mean. I think you even said you were going to do a whole album together. It was fairly obvious to me. Right. I mean, from the from the get go, where that was had it, where it already was when we met him. I mean, he was an amazing producer. Um, he had all the star quality. He was different. He challenged, in my opinion, a lot of the macho notion. This right. associated with with hip hop specifically. Like he even just said it recently, he said you won't do uh four years in college but you do twenty five of life. That's a disrespect to every gangster nigga in the world. Mm. No one even can caught that. Huh. Wait, he said what? He said you won't he do said four you won't. college you won't do four years in college, but you do twenty five of life. What he's trying to say is Pardon me, this is very hood what I'm doing. Yeah. It's all good. Okay, but you have any dental? No, he's saying that was where we place our values. Yeah, where you place our values. Yeah. Like, like, and then he also said, me and theirs wear chains. Like, it's also like, you dissing a millionaire. I've never heard this before. But I'm in. Who is this in the millionaire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Who, which millionaire he this? He, all of us. He <laughs> said, millionaires wear chains. <laughs> tuck my shit. <laughs> I'm tucking my ass. <laughs> well, man, you look ridiculous, <laughs> Bring all that up. No, Millionaires wear high river fishing boots. <laughs> but, but, Made out of nitro rubber. Right. But, but, I, I, but I, I, see, I see what, what you're saying on a documentary, and I see what even Dave said um, when Dave said, like, you know, he, he was uh, watching these clips with Kanye, and Kanye was said, I'm, I'm dope when I'm doing dope shit. But what I'm trying to get from you is, what was the actual thing that you knew that this guy was great? You listened to the beats. He did the truth for Beanie Siegel. So you talking about just the beats? The music, about, just the music. I said, alone? listen, if this guy right. is 50% as good rhyming right. as he is with them beats, mm. well, this is going to run away. Right. I mean, Diamond D, 
Uh-huh. It's another uh, uh, MC producer. <laughs> Stunts Monster Hip Hop is a, is a yeah. classic. Um, Pete Rock, who even just kind of like flirted with Ramen sometimes, but whatever he would do, it was a, it was a, it was a pure thing. High Tech is the same way. Dilla is the same way. Um, Pharrell. Just, um, Pharrell. Yeah. Kanye just took it to the fullest, ex- a, you know, yeah. extension where he right. was like, no, I'm, and people weren't trying to accept Kanye because he didn't fit into the archetype of what has been sold as a solo rapper image. At that you know, time. At that time. Right. He changed the paradigm for what was possible and, uh, in terms of an audience connecting with, um, with not just uh, the music, but also an approach. I mean, the whole thing with the you know college dropout with the mascot, all that. It's like it's art. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't about him. You know, I'm on the, I'm on the block doing this and this and that. But he and he made songs that that appeal to everybody, no matter where you were. You know, it was just it was just good music. I mean, you know, good life is not about some good sort life. of macho pasta. It's just right. dope. You know. So that's what I appreciate about him. And I saw what Puff was doing with No Way Out. Where I was like, if that's working, I know just Puff, but Puff is not rhyming like Kanye. Right. Puff is not even rhyming like right. Dr. Dre. Right. Dr. Dre is going in on those bars, whether he wrote them or not. Right, he right. sounds fantastic. Right. And not to say that Puff doesn't, but it's just, you know, it's right. another right. hemisphere. Right. Kanye was like, and he said it, ain't nobody, don't don't care who you go and get, ain't nobody cool as this, do the rap and the track, triple, double, no assist. It's like he's mm-hmm. telling you, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And when you have that type of talent musically, well, then naturally you have something interesting to say. I mean, Through the Wire, it's, it's the most rock and roll shit ever. Who does a verse right. with a jaw wire shot after they, you know, like, and this is their response to like flying out of a, the window of a moving car that they're driving, like, you know, like, mm-hmm you know, in a barely 30 or like in his early 30s or some shit, it's like, that's a serious thing. So, yeah, it was just always evident to me he had the vision. After he came out with graduation, let me tell you a story. So graduation, I hope I don't have nothing on my teeth because I was hungry. No, you good. Um, what, what kind of food was you eating though? Sir? It was just very simple. It was like a chicken wing and some rice. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, but thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a Reese's Pieces. Yeah, that was ill. As an aperitif. I'll have another one now. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, so Kanye, this is before graduation. And this is around the time that it was that whole thing between him and 50, like who's going to have the better first oh, yeah, right, yeah, 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 who's yeah, going to be right, the yeah. king of hip hop, yeah. boom. Yeah. And, you know, this is this is 50 post Get Rich and Die Trying. So 50's like, up, you know, yeah, his right. presence is up. It's like, give us that trying. It's right. like, I don't care what you feel about, you know, gangster rap or, or even 50 himself, but that shit is classic. I right. mean, that, that that was a classic record. Right. So, um, 50's up. Right. And he's loaded up with another one. And you, you nobody really knows what it's going to be because people forget power of the dollar 50. Like, when 50 was like, Spitting, Fifty I was, was on trying that album, sir. Yeah. Yes. yes so you know, like Fifty was yeah. like. I never got paid. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not disgruntled. I, I, I feel you. I feel yeah, you. The label, that label never paid you. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, uh. He still owes me a favor. <laughs> right. Right on. I hear yeah, that. Favor, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that. That was the label, bro. It wasn't him. Hey man. Right. <laughs> hey, hey man. Just let me finish. <laughs> so it was that whole. Um, Battle that they, you know, that they I, they were very happy to have a man. Qua, uh, Kanye had a listening session that was in a movie theater. I'll never forget it. It was right over there by um, Chelsea. No, it was like in the back of the old Def Jam building, like in the 40s and 50s, like just off there, like by, by where Cats, the Cats Theater is. You walk that block over, it's like 40. Oh, by Broadway. Like the Winter yeah, oh. by the Winter Garden. It's not Sony Studios, but it's like, it's like 49th. And, yeah. and not is I think it's no, it's before ten, so it's like night. It's right there on the corner where that old, yeah, that old Def Jam the uh-huh. Universal used to. So anyway, yeah. it was a local movie theater that was there. And what Kanye did is that you came into the movie theater. He had programs uh-huh. for like all of the songs and some of the lyrics and all that. So so caramel popcorn and edited visuals from anime movies that he liked and played that in sync to the music. 
the moment that he did that, and the moment that I left there, I left there, I was like, Kanye wins. Right. I don't care what 50 Cent got in, in, in the tank. He is not beating this album at this time. It's just no way. It was so creative. It was, I mean, good morning. It was, graduation is like, it's like a thriller moment that people actually don't appropriately, appropriately appreciate, appreciate even for this. I mean, and they try to, I always feel like they try to hate on it because he really sold a million records in a day. I don't care what they say. I don't know shit about the hey, space program. This, this is the, uh, the battle yeah, between him and 50. He, yeah. They say he sold first 900. Day release. His yeah. first day release. It's not the first week. It's the first day. If I'm not mistaken, it's either the first week or first day. I believe it's the first day. Uh, 50 sold 700,000 copies. This is before Spotify and all of this. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. We, we, know, we know. We know. Right. We know. Right. Right. Physical cool sales. Physical right. sales. Right. Yeah, we got this on Kanye too. Let's go. sold yeah. 900,000 pieces, which means he sold the main pieces and he yeah, don't yeah. want to say it. off. Round it off. Let's yeah. just like let's quit yeah. playing games. Yeah, let's stop playing. It kept Quote, the, punk, it punk, kept punk. the record industry like floating for at least the next five years with that, and it helped them transition into this whole streamer model. Right. Cause they was just they was sitting on cash. I mean, who who performs like that? It wasn't Coldplay. It wasn't U two. It wasn't any. It wasn't any other genre. It was Kanye West wow. with a beautifully cleanly produced album. There was pure hip hop. I mean, Barry Bonds. Like, what are we even? Talking about this shit right. was out of control, right. and um, yeah, I was like, "50s, he don't have nothing in response to that." He, wow. I mean, he's, you know, he's he was riding in the tide that Kanye created, in my opinion. And from an observer's point of view, for me, it felt like a referendum on mm. the uh, on the. Uh, you be using words I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but <laughs> I'm just, just, they clapping back. back. They clapping back. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I've been this whole time. I've been like, "Yep." <laughs> Nothing a referendum <laughs> is like you know the it's like a vote. Okay. It's like a it's almost like a public petition. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. It's not exactly a vote, but it's like but something that happens before a vote. Okay. But they have sign of cultural referendums like this side or this side is going to determine the cultural direction for right. this group for at, at least the next five years, if not the full generation. Mm. And in my opinion, that's what Kanye West's graduation album did. It opened up the paradigm creatively for what could be viewed as uh, groundbreaking and inventive and also having big scale. And there was no one at that type of pop culture scale who was being that creative. You know, and particularly in hip hop, so it was a it's a big moment for the culture. I mean, and and, and you know, yeah. this kid from Chicago that everybody slept on because he was wearing hard bottom shoes and you know, you know, fucking cardigans with button down shirts. But now everybody dresses like that, because, well, at least wants to. You know, like you know, if, you know, Kanye just stayed true to himself. I think that's what's the real parable. It's not about following a style that somebody introduced to you. It's about being you, you know, right. and okay. this whole notion. Authentically you. Yeah. So let me ask you. There was a cover, right? I believe it was you, Black Thought, and Farrell Mars. Farrell Mars. That's Source Magazine. Source Magazine. Source Magazine cover. This is Backpack. No, I mean, I mean. Okay, that, let me tell you what the outsiders looking in was saying. Backpack hip hop. <laughs> Is at the forefront now. Well, I guess, but you know, I mean, even that. Um, you remember? You remember the cover? I'm talking. But about even it. the backpack culture never accepted the, that terminology either. It was backpack. like it's something that people came up with to try to like. You know, I get what people coming from with it, but it was like it never stuck because it doesn't have any gravity right. to it. It's like what Wait, do you mean? Wait, backpack. So, 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 so is that so a derogatory? Like, so no, it's not. You know what it is? It's like okay, so. I grew up in Flatbush, Flatlands area. It's a yeah. two-fair zone. And so when we went to, went at that time, Greenwich Village, Lower yeah. East Side, to go to parties in the city, we hopped in the turnstile, we had backpacks on. 
And it was a very practical New York City thing. We also Shit, had Columbia, the backpack Columbia was also gear. like could be like a sign of danger. Yeah, because you got a gun. I used to pack a deuce, whatever. deuce, and a trade deuce, yeah. and yeah. my bubble goes down. I pack a gat in my right. knapsack. Right. That's what it was. But statues were cool now. But then you started seeing. Then, <laughs> yeah. then you start seeing in, in, in hip hop videos. Yeah. You start seeing yeah. Grand Pooba right. with the backpack on. Then you have kids from the suburbs coming to the let city. Let me tell you, wearing let empty me tell backpacks you, at the shows. Let me tell you where backpacks that's where became frowned upon. Backpacks and gangster <laughs> culture was simultaneously at one time. Mm -hmm. We ran in the same. It was one video. What they do? The roots. It separated backpack and gangster. That forever. sounds personal. Because it did? It did. No, because you know what it did? Mm -hmm. Everything that represented gangster, uh -huh. the roots had dissed at that moment. Damn, I'm, I feel mad hip hop right now. <laughs> I feel mad hip hop. No, Nori. <laughs> The devil. Let me play some outside baseball. Yes, yes. This is some outside baseball. No, I'm, not, I'm not a rapper. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm but just guessing. The, because I, 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 look, I need to hear y'all face after this. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Here I go. Okay. Whoever got the most bitches win. <laughs> okay. These gangsta niggas had bitches. Yes. They, but you they, remember what they do? Who, who do? The roots. The roots. Yeah. What do they do? Oh, yeah, the I remember the video. The video. And, and this is what happened. Yes, yeah. to and me. I love that video. Yes. And it was clever. Right. But there was more bitches at the Biggie show <laughs> <laughs> than there okay. was at the Roots one. More, more, more particularly, there's more bitches at the Nas show. Okay, but that but they didn't come yet. When what no, they no, do no. was before nah, Nas. Let me tell you something. No. What they do was no, before Let Illmatic. me tell you something. I don't know. If, I don't know if no, no, no. It was. I remember me and Nas having a meeting, and him saying that is about me. Y'all have a meeting about this? I'm saying you're oh, bunking, man. son. This is not about you at all. But remember, when they're chasing the rapper through, where they chasing the rapper through at? Queensbridge. No, in the projects, the project. not Queensbridge. Okay. Any projects in America, what every project looks the same. So I remember that 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 was the time. This is a long grudge, nigga. I can't believe I can't believe that you still have trauma over this. That what they do video. Fuck them backpack niggas. Cut that out, Nori. No, I can't. No. But he sound like you know he sound like Memphis Bleak talk about the Nas song. No, because you know what you know what was crazy to me was when Kanye said that. He said, I was faking being a backpack rapper. And yeah, that was crazy. Boot camp, people from boot camp came at us and said, yo, we want to respond to Kanye. And I was like, I don't think they were talking about you at all. No, yeah, I don't think he was talking, no, he was talking about me. He wasn't talking about Buckshot. <laughs> Buckshot's people who hit us. And me and no, his Buckshot, were both no, funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, no, we were both funny. Remember, we were like, the the remember the Who Got the Prize no. video? Yeah, right. 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 Music box. Right. Buckshot right. five foot with the backpacks right. jumping around. Listen, listen. That was the first. Is that considered? No, no that's why they felt that way. That's why they felt that way. That's why they felt that way. They felt they, they, they brought in. That, that, by the way, big up Boot Camp Clip, big up Buckshot. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 that's my family. That's well. my family. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I didn't understand that when Buck. It's because they had the backpack. No, he took it. They took it personal. When Buckshot yeah. Buckshot performs, he wears a backpack. Yeah. I just did the day. Apollo yeah. with yes. Karis One. Buckshot it. came out with the backpack, and you yep. know what? Now I get. Now I get it. Now I get what he was doing. <laughs> he, came, he came out Buckshot with the backpack. Come here. Oh, he, no. he took. He took. He put the backpack on the ground, and he turned around like this. That's what he did. Now I understand what he was doing. Right. Who Buckshot? Yeah. Yeah. He was making a statement. Right. About backpacks. But Kanye definitely wasn't talking about that. <laughs> no, he didn't. He was God, talking God. about the underground scene, which uh, I was saying, because that was a scene that was supporting him. The, the, the hey scene man, he was talking about. Give me one of them Puerto Rican beers he had. <laughs> it's true, yeah, it's a Puerto Rican beer. It's a Puerto Rican beer. <laughs> Feliz Navidad, nigga. <laughs> man, what a moment. I'm doing the drink champs in Yellow Springs, Ohio. God damn it. Mm, with yes. most deaf. Talib Kweli, nigga, yeah. we all need extra pages in our passports. Yes. Because we are those kinds of niggas. Yes, we are. We travel this world. Yes, we are. You see how everyone like, does it. 
And here we all are in the middle of nowhere, being us. Feels good, man. Listen, the fact that they did this album on Luminary is a bar. Mm. The fact that I get to touch this process like this is an honor. The fact that you are here doing Drink Champs, nigga, this is for the culture. Yes, yeah.